All right, welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and to everybody on YouTube for some Grixis Knights in Best of One, our last Best of One deck for the day. Hawkeye decided to come join us because we we needed a little bit of help. You know, our last two leagues didn't go as well as we would like, even though they were fun decks to play. This one's a fun deck to play too. You can see I have a sideboard, even though we're playing Best of One, just in case you like Best of Three and you want a sideboard. This is kind of a hastily thrown together sideboard, though. I'm sure there could probably be a better one. Um, I was thinking maybe Embrith Shieldbreaker as a knight that could destroy some witches' ovens. Maybe that. And then, of course, there's a lot of Simic decks running around for Noxious Grasp, Legion Zen for other aggro, and Duress and Negate against control decks. But. That's just kind of like a starting off point. But, you know, we're going to be playing in best of one here. The point of our deck is to have, is to be like Rakdos Knights with these, this aggressive, you know, aggressive one and two drop Knights, where we're really going to try to get through Cauldron's Familiars and just other blockers and everything with having um, First Strike, Trample, and Death Touch, kind of combining those three aspects. Knight of the Ebon Legion, we can pump this thing up to be a large Death Touch creature. This thing has Death Touch. Blacklands Paragon can give it something Death Touch. And then we, we have our top end things that give the first strike and trample, whether it's the Royal Scions, which we're really splashing blue for Royal Scions, uh, because really because that second plus one ability gives our creatures plus two, plus zero, first strike, trample, get that extra damage in here. And of course, Ember Cleaves, which we all know how good Ember Cleave is. It's like these things are just getting that extra damage in where we're you know trying to get that in with these one and two drops. We have, um, we can play a little bit of a later game too. We have uh, Order of Midnight that can keep on getting stuff back. But then, of course, we have the Smitten Swordmasters, make the opponents lose life. So if we can just get enough damage in with these things, we can use the Smitten Swordmasters to finish them off. The two worst aspects of this deck are, prob are one, the sideboard. <laughs> that's, that's the first one. And then second, the mana base. The mana base is pretty rough. You know, we only need blue for Royal Scions. So I have one island and then a couple Fable Passages to help find them, even though we don't really want Fable Passage early because we don't really want to tap land right away. So it's kind of rough. And then you know we have the Shocklands. Take a lot of damage from the Shocklands. I am playing Tournament Grounds because, because our man's kind of bad. But like Tournament Grounds casts almost everything. It doesn't cast Royal Scions, and it doesn't cast the Adventure parts. Um, so it doesn't cast like the black for Alter Fate or the black for Curry Favor or the red for Boulder Rush. It doesn't cast those, but it casts a lot of stuff, and I think it's worth it um, with this deck. But all right, this this is a definitely a fun deck to play too, though. Let's get some, get some good old attacking in. We're going to play seven games with Grixis Knights. Yeah, I the first time I played this deck, when I first played it, I had Midnight Reaper and a Murderous Rider, and they actually kind of just were a little expensive. And Murderous Rider was just pretty pretty difficult to cast because this like the swift end part doesn't get cast by um, by that land. And I just kind of basically went away from them. Like we're just going through. Like we don't really need to kill their creatures. We're just going to go through them with Royal Scions and Ember Cleave and just race. That's the plan at least. I only have one red source, so I'm going to just lead with Fervent Champion. Because if I led with Foulmire Knight, I couldn't double spell with the Fervent Champions. So I could go like Foulmire and then Fervent Champion Foulmire. But I may want our second Foulmire to be able to spend the three mana, the Profane Insight on. So with just having the... If I had if I had like a black-red duel, I would have led with this and then next turn done both Fervent Champions if I had a black-red duel. Alright, get that early damage in. Our Swordmaster's looking good. Bleh. Hmm. <laughs> we need our Royal Scions. If we just had a Royal Scions on this Falmire Knight right now. So I think I just sit back attack with these two again. I don't. I think I want to just keep this Foulmire Knight in play because of Smitten Swordmaster. Hmm. 
And I'm just going to draw a card. That was a good turn two for our opponent. But let's look for look for Royal Scions, look for Ember Cleave. <clears throat> look for Ember Kitty. So two cats, two witches ovens. There's not really any reason not to attack with these. Yeah, so, yep, we need another red source for Ember Cleave also. For the Ember, Ember Kitty. Pretty good hand over there. Double cat, double oven. Pretty good hand. At least it's not Mayhem Devil. Mayhem Devil would be disastrous, of course. I guess I need to grab the red source for Ember Cleave, but if I grab the black source, we can play everything in hand. Let's see. So if I grab black, we can go Knight champion and then we have seven creatures in play and then go sword master sword master and make them lose 14 sure i think i want to just do that like like yes we don't we're not gonna be able to play an ember cleave now but The game's not over. So yes, I only needed to do four to this, and then I could have put one on something else, but whatever I put the one on, they're just gonna chump block anyway. Oh, they just let damage happen? Oh my gosh, oh. First strike damage happens. <laughs> that was close. We have to figure out how to get the the rest of this damage in here now. Another Smitten Swordmaster, of course, is our best drop. Probably. Maybe an Ember, Ember Cleat. Or not Ember Cleat, but Royal Scions. Nope. Smitten Swordmaster now.
What? How did it rearrange in one of these was a 3-1? What's the deal with that? What? That's unfortunate. So yeah, that makes just a really easy block for them. That hurts. That's another... That's one point... Of, that's one less point of damage I'm going to do now. Uh, they did not sacrifice their cats. They kind of needed to do that. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, Arena's... Arena could do some crazy things like that. Yeah. Opponent helps out, though. By not, not sacrificing their cauldron familiars. So, all good. No, so, like... No, so, they, they could have stayed alive. So, basically, how that would have happened... Because they would have had... They would just sacrifice... Before first strike damage, they would sacrifice both cauldron familiars and bring them both back and gain too much... Or gain too life. And then first strike damage happens, and then they would take that two again. So, they would go back down to one. Were they, were they at one? Or were they at two? But yeah, so basically that would have canceled out. If they're at one, then yeah, they gain two life from their, their murderous rider, and then they take three from the, the three thing. So if they're at one, we had lethal. If putting the stuff correctly. They were at two, so then yeah, they would have only just gone down to one. They should have been able to stay alive. Love Strike Beast is a good card against me. That 1 1's definitely annoying with Black Lance Paragon and Rimrock Knight. And then the 5 5 is difficult to get through. Yeah, playing the 3-1 isn't as valuable with their 1-1 one, one in the way. I could attack, they block, I trade. Could have just traded my knight for their beast. But I feel like we're probably going to be able to make that trade eventually anyway. Well, that one's annoying.
Oh, boo. I don't like that card. Sorry, excuse me. I just kind of have everything covered here. Especially this Bronzedon. This Bronzedon. It's quite good. But now, they, now they're just drawing all these cards with Innkeeper, too. Why did that have Bronze Don? Oh, Donald. Oh, Donald. I think it's pretty likely that my opponent has the the order of midnight. Maybe not. To be able to get them back. Which is why I, I was planning on having the three one block the two three so they don't get to to have keep having the life link. That was kind of my plan originally. But then I thought, well, we're I'm killing two creatures. Then order of midnight with the lucky clover gets them both back, and that's really annoying. Jesus, Bronzedons. Speaking of Order of Midnight, that would be a good one for me to, to draw.
That's why sometimes Rose Ions is better than Embercleave because of Brontodon. If we had if we have Rose Ions, we'll pump this thing up to be a 5-1 first strike attacker. They just always have the one mana up. They're always keeping that available. Looks pretty over. GG. GG's. Man. So close. All right, one on one. Alright, so see how good Stormfist Crusader is. <laughs> this basic island looks really silly in our red-black deck. I need both more red and more black mana. Looks like the Orzhov Sacrifice we were just playing. It's a sweet deck. Of course, this this would have came into play tapped if I would have gone and gotten a Black Source for Foulmire Knight a little bit ago. So I wanted to draw my two cards first. If we drew a red land, then I'd go get black. If we drew a black land, I'd go get red. Unfortunately, we got neither of those two.
I don't think we really need to get the Paragon back. Whatever, we have we have enough cards. I want to get bodies out here. <laughs> That's, of course, the problem, though, with getting the Swamp. I get to unload the hand and, and make it better against Priest. just dead though to a Yara plus four cauldron from I mean this is actually just lethal yeah <clears throat> once I shocked in here this is just lethal my opponent does it they just sack 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 that's six six damage activate priest that's eight damage I'm just dead and of course it's also six life I can't kill them My words off sacrifice opponent hit land drops and they won. That's what we noticed. Like whenever we went three and four with that deck, we just had like four matches where we didn't hit land drops. The three ones that we did hit land drops, we won. All right, looks like we get to be on the play this time. We've been on the draw the last few games, last couple games. Right, well, at least those two losses were on the draw both times. So we'll see how being on the play does. <laughs> uh, there just wasn't a chance of us winning that. Doesn't matter if my opponent didn't realize it or not. They would realize it the next turn. There's no way they're not sacrificing their Cauldron Familiar to the Witches of it and bringing it back. Like That's just what the cards do in their deck. They're just going to do that, and then I die. All right, now we start Embercleave next turn. Riding Registrar is a good card for them to play. It's a hard card to get through. I haven't seen any roll scions yet.
I'd rather them just go to discard and discard stuff, but then the problem with not attacking is if they just have like regular removal, you know, like they have like another Bone Crusher giant that just kills my Swordmaster, then I don't get to kill their Rotting Regisaur. So even though it's better for me not to attack to make, to start chipping away from their hands. But the worst case scenario, because like this thing's a, those things still are seven sixes. There you go. That's a good card. I like that. I like seeing that. That's gonna help me out. <laughs> yeah, th yeah, this game is pretty awesome. It does make time go by real fast, that's for sure. I don't want them to use be able to use a damage spell to kill my Knight of the Ebon Legion, which is why I didn't just equip Ember Cleave. Um, they're pretty close to dying. If they block here, they die. Okay, so they go to one. Now they're dead. Well, they're just dead. They're just dead on board. First strike, trample, death touch. Puts them down to one. Stormfist Crusader. First strike, trample, death touch. Very powerful. <clears throat> and that's what our deck's kind of built around. We just finally got to... That was the first game that we actually got to do. First strike, de trample, death touch stuff. <laughs> It's not too it's not too hard, Kittles. We go with the full wins or not. It's definitely my favorite knot. I don't think I'm going to keep the triple Ember Cleave hand. <clears throat> we'll get a new one. Oh, wait. There's no black mana in here? Oh, I thought that was Blood Crypt or Watery Grave or something. Oh, I just... I didn't... Um... Well... I don't think I'm going to count this game. I think we're just going to not count this towards our seven. Yeah, we're just not going to count this game. Alright, let's go to the next game. I should have molded five. But still, mold of five is just kind of whatever. We're just not going to count that. No, Smurf, I don't do any coaching. I spend all my time uh, here on stream and making YouTube videos and stuff, you know, like that. So I don't really have extra time because I, I stream for seven hours a day. And then and I also spend another hour or two each day making the decks beforehand. So I just don't have time for coaching also. What? I said pay to life. I clicked the pay to life and then I was moving over here. Did it? Did it just kind of like lag the click register and register that I didn't say pay to life? Mm. 
So sorry, Smurf. So no, I don't. I don't do coaching though. Questing beast. Ow. All right. Do five. And then we got five damage exactly. So even though I missed the one point of damage earlier, Still got exact lethal there. All right, three and two. Play two more. Ugh. That's a good looking hand. We finally have the Royal Scions. And the Royal Scions on curve, too. Finally get to draw the Royal Scions. I thought they were going to be killing my Knight of the Ebon Legion, honestly. Which is why I attacked with it, but... Worked out. Alright, Royal Scions! First Strike Trample! We got there, 4 and 2. Four and two. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Three CMC Planeswalkers. What are they doing with those? Do, do, do. Yeah. 
Yeah, even if, yeah, even if they tried to kill Rule of Silence, it's still just going to gain us a lot of life because all that loyalty. That's true. Don't like how the Planeswalkers change aggro like that. Well, it wasn't bad whenever the Planeswalkers all cost you know, like four or five six mana. But just having three, and even just like the three mana Planeswalkers, they used to have a like really low loyalty. But just three mana Planeswalker with just, like that's just a ridiculous amount of loyalty to throw on a three mana Planeswalker. It's pretty absurd. I think I'm supposed to get more creatures out here. Yeah, you can definitely play Duress in the main main deck. Absolutely. That was, of course, just the absolute worst card that I could see, Wicked Wolf. So I can't even really... I can't really even attack with the 5-1 five, the five First Strike Trample because they just make it indestructible. And while I I just trample over one and then my, my Rimrock Knight dies, so even with having First Strike there... Wicked Wolf was definitely the worst card for me to see. Mm. Well, this is just a complete anti-aggro deck here. Making aggro hard these days. Ooh, I th think you're going to end up regretting that attack. Rowan, help! Help! Fear into the hearts of the wicked. All right, certainly hoping they don't find any kind of thing to kill my Rimrock Knight.
I only have the two black mana though, as far as like trying to play out a bunch of knights and with this, which is unfortunate because black is what black's the main color of our knights. Could draw like a fervent champion and be able to go fervent champion, order of midnight, and then drain for four. Uh, they did find something to kill my Rimrock Knight. That was pretty perfect. Good hand for the opponent. Good hand. We had a good hand too. You know, sometimes the opponent just has a better one. Especially against like what we're doing here. That wicked wolf was huge. Step aside or be My don't be surprised if we meet again. Oh come on. Stop. Stay away from my brother. Oh, are you kidding me? That was probably the absolute worst card for me to see. I was just basically just cycling away. That really hurts. That was that was the absolute worst card for me to to see. Sir Katato, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Man, that because that's like the perfect card for me to draw like this next turn of like spend this three mana equip Embercleave to Rimrock Knight, attack with the with that, and have Swordmaster, Swordmaster. That would have been nice. Thanks, Sir Katato. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Basically, you just have to be level 100. I think I think it goes up to 110 for the mastery level, um, but basically 100, you get you get like the final sleeves and base. You know, basically all the rewards. Yeah, the, the end of the Mastery Pass is whenever the next set is released. That's when it always ends, is whenever the next set's released. Everyone is they got this one now. Me. Like they've, they've hit a couple of just perfect cards of the Trail of Crumbs, too. Golgari Queen, Murderous Rider. This being instant speed removal for whatever I choose to equip. I just have this.
this over. Well, darn. We had a good hand there. We lost the game where we had Royal Scions. That Golgari Queen was going to kill a creature. They had the instant speed removal. Wicked Wolf was basically lethal. Hey, Kitty Dexterity. Um, but there we go. So that's that's Grixis Knight. Um, yeah, so if we own 4-3, not too bad. We'll take that. Um... Mana wasn't wasn't so bad. You can see while we're why we're using the tournament grounds al along with the blood crypt though, because we need a blue source for the Roasons, but besides that, we need a whole lot of red and black. And so that's why we have the tournament grounds in here also to, to help provide other options for both red and black mana. But yeah, we're gonna be weak to a card like Wicked Wolf. Wicked Wolf was just just completely devastating that game. And that's going to be a card that we're just going to be weak to. Um, it happens. But there we go. That's that's uh, Grixis Knight. So those of you all watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that like button over there. And uh, feel free to leave the comments also. Let me know what you think of the deck. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's it here for Grixis Knight. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you for the next video.